transmitters into a living hole. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.
us to live in the gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Help us to walk in that mighty grace and carry your good news to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anybody here for the first time? Anybody here for the first time? Okay, well, if you want to, you can stand up and tell us your name and where you're from. Oh, you don't care? Okay, that's all right. No, no problem. Uh, anybody else? No? Okay, all right. Okay, yes, yeah, so congratulations on the resurrection of Jesus. Today's service is held to celebrate Easter. And also, thank you for that representative prayer from Suji and Kim. Okay, and uh, next week's representative prayer will be given by Pauline. Small group fellowship will be continued after the service. Um, also, the vision meeting for April will be held after the small group fellowship. Um, Saturday Bible study is held online at 10 a.m. every Saturday. Happy Easter. Shall we greet each other like this? He has risen for you. As we all know, Easter is the day we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And today's passage, Matthew chapter 28, verse 8 to 20, is also about that. It's a story about uh, Jesus after and what he did after he resurrected all uh, from death. So, I will read the passage for you. Matthew chapter 28, verse 8 to 20. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings. He said, they come to him. They came to him in a class and his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Calvary. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and uh, devised a um, plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely uh, circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but the some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the church. Right after Jesus resurrected from death, where did he go? Where did he go? I mean, where would you go if you were Jesus? I think if I was Jesus, I don't know, maybe Pharisees to prove that I'm risen. Or maybe only part that what you did is wrong. You should not do like that and then just wash your hands like that. Or maybe, I don't know, to uh, other people to prove that, like, he, I am the real God. Where, where would you guys go? I think I would I would go to these people to uh, revenge on them or something. 
But Jesus did not use the life, ability, and authority of resurrection to prevent it. Then, where did it go? Again. Oh. Uh, as I get older, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not that old yet, but as I get older, sometimes I want to uh, watch uh, some sorrowful movie or clip or video that makes me cry. Is it, is it safe for you guys? No? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, that's good. It's good that we, I have some people who can empathize. So I sometimes look for those kind of videos. I don't know why. Maybe I'm weird. And one of the videos I like to search out is uh, the soldiers, American soldiers coming back home. After they suffer a lot in, in the abroad, they, after they miss their family enough, then they come back home and then they see their family first. Right? They go to their, their loved one directly. Right? Then let's take a look, where did Jesus go? Jesus, yes, he met the woman first, the women, two women. But what did he tell all these uh, women? Let's take a look at verse 9 again. He says, suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers. Who are these brothers? They were disciples. Jesus wanted to meet the, his disciples first. Not his family, not his mom, but his disciples. And he even told them, he did it in a different way. Here, he's calling them brother, James. And he commanded this woman to tell them to go to Galilee, and, uh, a certain mountain in Galilee, and then I will be. Jesus, the soldiers who go always, who goes to directly to their family or their loved one after the war or after uh, the suffering, after enduring all the suffering in the opera, they have missed their family and loved one so much. And it was the same for me too when I was serving military in the hip hop for two years in the hearing. I always kept, kept my uh, picture of not my parents, I'm sorry, mom, but, but Stephanie, <laughs> sorry mom, <laughs> oh, my parents don't see this, <laughs> I always kept uh, the photo of my wife, my uh, current wife, that, she, she wasn't my wife, <laughs> I always kept that in my pocket and I always see, see like whenever I had time, I like, was running around and then I like I like to see her picture of her and then just I just miss her so much. And, I like to and so every time I come come out from the winter camp uh, for the vacation, or every time I could, uh, after I finish my uh, military, that's where I went. I always went to the Stephanie's house and they see her. That's what I did. Who would Jesus miss the most when he was in the Was his disciples. He was disciples because the disciples were his life. He, while he was go, going through, enduring all those suffering, the suffering of Calvary and the cross, he was missing his yeah. disciples. So right after he resurrected, he went directly to his disciples. He wanted to meet his disciples. But church now, who are the disciples? Oh, yeah. It's us. Oh, yeah. right? Acts chapter 2, verse 33 says that exalt, exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promise the Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. The reason why Jesus ascended to heaven was also to be with all of us. In other words, if you were there at that time, if you were, if, if you were living there at that time, and, and, uh, during that time, you got you, each one of you would be the, the person that Jesus would sit first after he and your all the saints But who are these disciples? For these disciples, were they? Do they deserve?
Caesar this? This disciple, they were the one who ran away when Jesus was suffering, right? They were the, the one who, like one of them even betrayed him. I mean, but we cannot give all the blame to him because the rest of the disciples also ran away when Jesus was in suffering. And Peter denied him even three times. In other words, he had three chances, but he rejected all of them and denied him three times. Hello. <laughs> Than Jesus, and we might forget about Jesus, and we might believe Jesus, but Jesus' decision is this, coming back in for you. He has resurrected to see you again, to, make, to let you live the resurrected life. These disciples, they all run away, but Jesus, after he resurrected, these disciples were the one that Jesus was seeking for. But then, uh, what was the what was the response of this disciple? What was this, this, uh, this disciple's response? Except for the Judas, everyone they came to the mountain in the colony and they met Jesus. Yes, some of them they doubted. They doubted that if Jesus was real Jesus. And they doubted that he might be fake Jesus. He might be someone else. He might. They might have. They might thought like that. But the important thing is that they came back to Jesus. That was their response. Listen to Jesus, and then they came back. Even though they had, they some of them doubted it. They just came to Jesus as to who they were, and Jesus met them, and then forgave them, and restored them. That's what we have to do too. I mean, what was the difference between Judas, who didn't come uh, because he was dead at that time? What was what was the difference between Judas and other eleven disciples? It wasn't simply that Judas' sin was greater than other disciples, and I don't I don't think I, I cannot get I cannot claim I cannot even claim that the sin of Judas was heavier than others. Because other disciples, they also betrayed Jesus. Some scholars say that Judas betrayed Jesus because at that during that time, Jewish all the Jews they had hope that Messiah will some someday one day come and then save them from Roman Empire, Roman soldiers at that time. And many scholars believe that Jude, the purpose of Judas when he was selling Jesus was this. So if he, he wanted Jesus to be sold so that, one, so that he can there show his power and then be a king and then conquer other world and then save Israelites from the Roman and be a true be a messiah. That they were expecting, but what Judah thought was wrong. What Judas thought thought was wrong. But what was the, then? What, what was the difference between these two, uh, eleven disciples and then Judas? All, the, all of them, they they all regretted, and then they felt remorse. But the difference was that Judas he tried to find a hope from his own ability. He tried to do find the, he tried to get the hope through his ability. So when he realized that he cannot do anything with his ability, he his own, the only way he could take was handing his life. What about the others? What about the other disciples? They also kind of betrayed him, betrayed Jesus, and then they all left Jesus. But still, still, they tried to find hope in Jesus. <laughs> the 
that was the difference. Je uh, Judas, he didn't find hope in Jesus. But every the, the other disciples, even though they, some of them doubted, even doubted, and even though they they left Jesus when Jesus was in suffering, they just came to Jesus, came back to Jesus as who they are, and they obeyed Jesus again. I, when I read this, I thought that it, it, could, it would have been better if Jesus called them to the Temple of Jerusalem because I thought it could be a good uh, field of learning for them to show that show in front of everyone that, oh, see, disciples, your master, your Lord, alive again, ris risen again, and then he's, he's in front of everyone. But he didn't do that. He met his disciples in Galilee. And where was Galilee? It was, it was the place where all these disciples confessed Jesus' first time that I will follow you. Galilee was the place where Jesus', uh, where Jesus disciples confessed that I will follow you. And I will, you will be my Lord. And church, this is same for us too. Again, we might have left Jesus sometimes, and we might leave him alone. But whenever we come back to the first place where we met Jesus the first time, he's always there. He's always there. All we need to do is just come as we are. Just lay down, deny ourselves, and then lay down everything before God. Our ability, greed, and our self-esteem. And then let all our greed, self-esteem, and the sinfulness that die with Christ on the cross and live new life through healing ourselves only with Jesus Christ. This restoration, for Christ, this restoration of Christ made us, made all the Christians deny themselves and fill their themselves only with Jesus Christ. That was the, that is the meaning of the uh, resurrection of Christ. Resurrection, the Jesus Christ's resurrection does not only refer to uh, the future resurrection of, of believers on the last day, but it also refers our the believers' resurrection and our our death, our death, our death of our old past and living a new life. And that's what Jesus did through his resurrection. And the detail of this is uh, also written in John chapter 21, verse 15 to uh, 17. John chapter 21, verse 15 to Oh, excuse me, John, John chapter 21, verse 15 to 19. It says like this. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Who was Peter? Peter was a super confident guy. He was a super confident guy. He, uh, before Jesus was resurrected, before Jesus was crucified, and then before uh, he denied Jesus, he was super confident guy, of, uh, and he was confident in his loyalty uh, for Christ. 
So when Jesus also when Jesus said like you're gonna deny me, Peter said like that will not going to happen. And he always confessed that Jesus, I love you the most, and I love you more than anything. He was super confident, and he thought that he can do something for Jesus with his own ability. He was that confident. But what happened here? Let's. We have. I. I Church, I'm encouraging you to try to empathize Peter's feeling in, in this passage. Jesus asked him three times, do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? And then Peter answered. And then on the third time, today's passage is that Peter was hurt. Peter was hurt when Jesus asked him if he loved him three times after the restoration because it reminded Peter of his own failure and denial of Jesus during the crucial, the crucial moment. Before Jesus was cru crucified, he had predicted that Peter would deny him three times, but what did Peter say? He was so confident in his, he, he, in his loyalty and claimed that he would never do such a thing, such, such a thing, and he <coughs> would never betray him. But when the time came, Peter indeed denied Jesus three times out of fear for his own safety. After the restoration, when Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him, it served as a reminder of Peter's denial and his own weakness. And this repetition like, uh, likely caused Peter emotional pain. That was why he said, to this passage is saying that Peter was hurt. Before Jesus was crucified, Peter said, I love you, several times to Jesus, and he was confident. But this I love you contains a lot of things. When, G when Peter said, I love you for this time, to this, to this passage, this I love you contains, sorry, Lord, I tried everything that I could do, and I tried everything with my own ability, but I realized that I cannot do anything Peter laid down everything before God. And he finally came to Jesus as who he was. <clears throat> then Jesus said like this, Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. Saying that you were a Christian and you were my disciples, but you tried to do with your own ability. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Where, what does this stretch out your hand mean? It means that Peter, the answer is on the, on the following verse. He says, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Was cross, was dying of cross. When Peter emptied himself, denied himself, and come to Jesus, this thing happened. He could finally die on the cross with Christ. And then Jesus said, what did Jesus say at the very last? Follow me. Follow me. Church, this is the resurrected life that Jesus has given us through his resurrection. So as during the... the during the Easter, as we celebrate this res uh, the resurrection of Christ, this is what we have to remember today. He has risen and he has resurrected for us to lead resurrected life. And what is that? Denying ourselves and then let our ego, self-esteem, and greed die on the cross and fill Jesus, fill ourselves only with Jesus and live new life. If you uh, the Matthew chapter two, if you see Matthew chapter twenty eight verse eight to uh, verse uh, excuse me verse ten, he says, "Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brother." Jesus never called his disciples his brother, but but he said what? But he said like this Matthew chapter twelve verse four uh, 
verse 46 to 50, you can find um, Jesus saying like this, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus was treating Peter as his brother. Because Jesus was giving Peter the same ministry that he did for the world that he had created. But church, we should not just take this as Peter's story. Today, this passage is our story. We are the disciples of Christ. And we are the one who told that follow me from Jesus. Church, again, during the Easter, as we think about the resurrection of Christ, we also think about our resurrected life, how we are going to live our life. Church, Jesus' resurrection was for our resurrection too. As he defeated the victory, we could be set free from the sin. And what we have to do is very simple. It's just come to Jesus as a then he will wash our sins away. Then all we need to do will be just filling ourselves again with Jesus. Jesus knew that we were weak and that we cannot do anything without him. So he died on the cross on behalf of us to make us new again. And all we need to do is accepting this fact. We are weak, but we have hope in Jesus. Again, the resurrection of Christ does not only refer to the future resurrection of believers, but it also makes us live resurrected life through leading us to deny ourselves and fill ourselves with Jesus Christ. He leads us to cross and make us new again. So church, today, as we celebrate the Jesus' resurrection, I'm encouraging you to come to Jesus, deny yourself, lay down everything before Jesus, and make your own ego, self-esteem, and greed die in, Jesus, die in Jesus on the cross and live a new resurrected life. That is all Jesus wanted when he went through all the sufferings of Calvary. and the cross. So church, Today, as we celebrate the restoration of Christ, I hope we can also resurrect with Christ and live the new resurrected life. Let's pray. Church, Lord, we gather in your presence to celebrate your boundless love and the restoration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With grateful hearts, we rejoice in the victory over sin and death, and we are deeply thankful for the promise of eternal life through your Son. Jesus' restoration not only triumphed over death, but also resurrected our spirit, giving us new life in you. We are eternally grateful for this incredible gift and the transformative power it brings to our lives. As we come together with the family and friends, let our heart be filled with the joy and hope that this scarred day represents. May we be reminded of the sacrifice Jesus made for us and let it inspire us to live with compassion, humility, and gratitude. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. As we, as we continue our, on our own journeys of faith, guide us to walk in the light of your truth and grace, and let our lives be a testament to your love. And may we work toward creating a world that reflects the peace and unity you, you, you desire for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, let's uh, sing, give thanks all together as we give our own praise to God.
Thank you that you give the gift of abundant eternal life. You said that you are a good father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength be unto you, our God, forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's, uh, today's, today's, let's close today's service with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours.